Hey, hello, and welcome sports fans to this live video streaming event from Table Rock Sports Productions in partnership with our local high schools, uh, school districts, and sponsors. I'm Jeff Lang alongside Damian Idiart coming to you live from Crater High School in Central Point, Oregon. I want to thank you for joining this evening on this Friday the 13th. And welcome to the Lithia Superstore Game Nights powered by Siskiyou Cellular in Southern Oregon. Tonight we're featuring the visiting North Eugene Highlanders visiting the Crater Comets. We're pleased to bring you this game on TableRockSports.net in partnership with our community, our business partners. Joe Brett is the executive producer for tonight's event. Star Spangled Banner from the Crater High Band. Nice to have the Crater Band here, Damien. It's the third third home game in a row. They're three out of three. It's always nice to have the, the band present. Is it one of your favorites, Jeff? When they play the good stuff. They don't pull the good stuff out until the second half. You know that. <laughs> All right, let me grab my uh, glasses here. North Eugene Highlanders make the two-and-a-half-hour trip down I-5. Head coach Blake Gee in his third year. Last year came in at 10-14, and 14, a 7 and 9 Midwestern League record. Starting lineups now for the Highlanders again of North Eugene. Wearing number zero, that's Jonas Spencer, a forward. Uh, Joey Banry, also a junior, a guard, wearing number three. Number four is Nolan Duke. He's a senior. Um, and then uh, they're joined by number five. That's Ben Kitzhopper, a senior forward. And the last of the starters for Coach Blake Gee. Number 10, that's Ethan Sims. He's a senior standing 6'4". So the Highlanders go 6'4", 5'9". Duke at 6'4", Kid Hopper at 6'4", and Sims at 6'4", a stout front line. Crater Comets uh, starting lineups now for Coach Brian Scott in his first year. 11-3 start for Coach Scott, 2-0 in the Midwestern League with wins against Springfield and Ashland. At guard, number four, the junior, that's Ashton Akery. He's joined by number 15, uh, sophomore, Kyle Biddle. Number 22, Ty Delin. He's a junior. And uh, they're joined by number 22, excuse me, number 32, Hunter Schwenk. He's a senior, stands 6'5", and the last of the five starters for Coach Brian Scott. That's Marcus Idiot, wearing number zero, a senior for the Comets. Comets dressed in all white with a tint of orange. Highlanders in the traditional red, trimmed in white. Highlanders moving from left to right on your screen. Damien, it's Friday the 13th. Any superstitions? No, I'm not superstitious. Okay. I am a little bit about sports, but not dates. I was looking at their schedule. They've played some tough teams. Wilsonville, South Medford, LaSalle Prep. Yeah, several 6A. Roseburg, Sheldon, Willamette, all large schools. They come in with a record of 6-7 and seven overall. All right, here we go. Highlanders win the tip. Layup up and in. One for one are the Highlanders. Ethan Sims with the first bucket for the Highlanders. Full court press by the Highlanders. A lot of press there by Joey Banner. 
That's stolen away, but tapped into the hands of Ty Delin. He's going to attack Kitzhopper, rethinks that. Out to Acre, assesses the situation. They're in a man-to-man -man defense. EDR out at half court. Now Ty Delin, high screen from Schwenk. Ball gets tied up, but Delin will remain possession. Acre into the lane, kicks it to Biddle for the open three. Doesn't go. Battle for the board by Schwenk and Kitzhopper. Into the hands now of Sims. I wonder if Kitzhopper's any relation to our old governor. Could be. Could be. That's what I was thinking. Stolen away by Acre. Back into the hands of Banry. Back into the hands of Acre. They go back and forth like volleyball now. Acre drives up to Delin. Up and in for two. A token full court press by the Comets at 2 2 1. Slow them down. Sims to Kitzhopper. Over to Duke. Duke back to Banry. Banry will drive into the lane. Pulls up the free throw line off into the hands of Acre. A great crowd on hand tonight. Quickly up court. And one. Oh, yeah. Almost got it to fall. Yeah. Acre into the hands of our player of the game, Hunter Schwenk, last game, right? Yeah. I like the confidence he went up with that. What a great he young, needs to do that. He's the big guy. Yeah, a great young man. We had him up here. He's a transfer this year in his senior year. Hard to do. Came over from Henley High School. You said he's a baseball player, right? That's I hear he's a very sport. good baseball player. Very good pitcher. <laughs> Got to be tough to transfer your senior year, huh? Or any time, really, huh? For friends, at least. Sports? I don't know. He's fit in pretty well. He certainly does. Making an impact, 6'5", senior Hunter Schwenk up and in. Nope, he misses that. He's 0 for, excuse me, 1 for 2 at the line. Banry, pressure by Idiart, just hounding him all the way down. Into the hands of Spencer, back to Banry. Bobbled by Sims, long three, comes into the hands of Idiart. He'll look to push up the left-hand side, finds Biddle. He's got an open lane, he'll take it. A lot of contact and gets yeah. the bucket. Ooh, nice move. A lot, of, a lot of body control on that one. That was beautiful. I think you hit it exactly right. He had a lot of time to think about that. He knew some contact was coming, took the contact, was able to get the ball up on the glass and in. It's really fun to see him develop right in front of our eyes. <laughs> really good stroke by Kyle on that free throw. It gives him three for the night. Comets are up 6-2. Uh -oh. Sims breaks the pressure. Bounce pass to Kitzhopper. Idiart double team. Here's Delin up to Biddle. They break the press. See what he does to Idiart. Stutter step now at the elbow. A3 a bounce pass to Shrink. Now to Ty Delin. Good ball movement there. Got the right shot. Uh oh. Sims a beautiful pass up to Duke. <laughs> Good defense by Delenn. He came up and back down. I think he thought he was in the NBA there. I thought he was going to try to windmill that thing in there. <laughs> Turnover for Coach Blake G. 6-4. Comets. Idiot now on the break. Delenn right into the lane. Four-footer. Can't get it to go. Schwenk comes down with it. Marcus thinks about it, backs it back out. The left, he drives to his left. A lot of contact. He'll go up and in for oh. Marcus. Again. Both coaches are really testing each other out with this full court press, and both teams are having no problem on the offensive front breaking it. Yeah, they're choosing that long pass over the top. It's, it's open. Duke will be at the line to shoot two. Foul on number 15. That's Kyle Biddle, his first. <laughs> Folks, tonight's game is brought to you by Schlesinger de Villeneuve. Attorneys with practices throughout Southern Oregon and the Southern Oregon Sports Commission Know Your Role campaign. Promote respectful and civil behavior at youth sporting events. Duke gets that one up and in for his first point of the night. If you're watching up in... Eugene, welcome. Glad to have you here on Table Rock Sports. Table Rock covers many, well, all of the high schools here in the Rogue Valley. Crater, South Medford, North Medford, Ashland, Glance Pass, Hidden Valley, North Valley, Cascade Christian, it goes on and on. 
Middle into the lane. Ten footer off the front of the rim. Good defense by Sims. Yeah, he didn't elevate on that. I think if he had elevated, he would have made it. Banry. Beautiful rotation by Joey Banry. The junior nails it right in front of the crater bench. Knots it up at eight. Pass up to Delin. He's going to drive baseline. Too much contact there by Jonas Spencer. Again, the ref was right there. Again, uh, just uh, some, some, some athletes here from North Eugene. Um, all of them, 6'4", 6'4", 6'4", and then Banry's a point guard. First substitution in for Coach Blake Gee is number 12. That's Caden Gould. He's a junior. Oh, no one's watching deep. That was a guard's fault. Coach Brian Scott wants a timeout. On the John L. Scott scoreboard, it reads, the North Eugene Highlanders 10, the Comets 8. To an honorably discharged U.S. veteran? If so, did you know that you and your spouse could save approximately $5,000 by taking advantage of using a VA National Cemetery? You and your spouse get a grave or urn space, grave lining, opening and closing, headstone, and perpetual care, all free. Conger Morris can assist you with making all final arrangements and also help with other benefits that you and your spouse are entitled to as a veteran. Call Conger Morris or visit one of the offices. Welcome back here to Crater High School on this Friday the 13th. Thomas found themselves down by two, stolen away by Gould into the hands of Banner, and he nails another three. He's two for two. A little different spot this time for Banner. He's got six tonight. I'm sure that's not what Coach Scott wanted to see out of the timeout. They will up to Schwenk. Yes. Schwenk can't get that to go from four. Good defense by Gould. Sims. To Gould, back to Banner. He's got the hot hand. Nope. Into the hands of Acre. Pushes it up to Delin. Fast, fast pace tonight. Delin past Kitzhopper up and in for two. So Delin now has four on the night. 13 10 Highlanders. We're so used to seeing Crater press. I, I wonder what would happen if they didn't press. We're going to find out <laughs> tonight for sure. North Eugene having too easy of a time. Or a different type of press, maybe, right? A man-to-man -man maybe may bother him a little bit more. Shot by Acre. He's asking for the fouls. I didn't see it. Didn't catch any rim. First foul on Delenn at half court. 2.51 left here. First quarter action. Midwestern League. Both teams come in 2-0 and in league, fighting for that first place spot. Comets currently ranked number eight in OSAA rankings. The Highlanders at 16, but don't be fooled. They've had a very difficult schedule. Too much arm <laughs> by Sims into the chest of Acre, so. Didn't complain much. They must have known it. We'd gone to the zone there, which was kind of nice to see him stop him a little bit. Got the first uh, Comet substitutions of the night. Cody Duckowitz now wearing number 20, joined by Jacob Rucker wearing 33. What is that uh, chant they're doing? I'm not sure. D up, D up. That could be. Turnover by Delin into the hand, stolen away by Acre. He goes up and misses the layup. These guys push the ball as well as Crater does. Yeah, and they're all large. I mean, they're all large, lanky, 6'4". Oh, pass by Gould. And he gets uh, heckled a bit by the student body on that pass. He took it off his hand and it hit the sideline. I'd like to have that one back for sure. I'm not sure if our cameramen will uh, focus on the student section, but they are looking good tonight. All orange. A few of them got those jumpsuits, huh? <laughs> What's that show on Netflix? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't. Black is orange, orange is black. There you go. Thomas break the press. Acre has a look. He'll drive baseline, draws contact, and goes up and in for two. No foul, but two points 
He was pretty high up there on the rim. 15-12, high scoring quarter in high school basketball. Two minutes left here. Gold, Sims now with the lin on him. Comets look to be in a zone, a 2-1-2 two, yeah. two extended. No, they're in a man-to-man. Check that. Idiot trying to get Bannery to go to his left. Kitzhopper now, he kicks it back to number 13 who's checked in, Elias McKinnis. Kitzhopper, he'll kick it to Gould. Open shot off the hands of Duckowitz. Well, they were playing on their heel. Crater was playing on their heels a little bit, but I think they've calmed down. So, see if they can end the quarter strong here. I've been on my heels all week, Damian. It's not a good place to be. It went kind of fast. I felt like it seemed like we were just here on Tuesday. Yeah. Three-point shot up and in. Frenetic shot by quick number release. 13. Yeah, Elias McKinnis with his three. Turnover on the Comets. Minute 13 left here, a six-point spread. End of the game, that's sophomore. Number 11, that's Ben Higginson. Respite for Marcus Idiart here with just over a minute. Great crowd on hand tonight. Balls into Duckwitz, he bobbles that. Kitzhopper's gonna pressure. Duckowitz gets around him and goes in for the floater with his left oh, hand. Wow. Two points. I was going to scream at him to dump it off into Higginson, but he ends up making the basket. Banry goes in, up and in for two. Quick. Eighth point for Joey Banry tonight. North Eugene is a solid team, let me tell you. Up to Higginson, back to Acre, 44 seconds left. Ty Delin gets a shot. And down, that's deep. Ice water in his veins. Back and forth they go. Delin with seven in the quarter. Nice give and go. Stolen away by Delin with under 30 now. Ashton Acri with some instructions here from Coach Brian Scott as he crosses half court. 2017 here. Carter has to be pretty pleased. He's get, uh, you know, the Highlanders came in punching. Under 10 now, Delin. Screen from Rucker. There's Kitzhopper on him. Duckowitz with two seconds, drives in. Ball ripped away and blocked by Kitzhopper and nearly hits the three-quarter court shot. What a great first quarter of high school basketball, Midwestern League play. Thanks for joining us here on Table Rock Sports on the John L. Scott scoreboard. It's the North Eugene Highlanders 20 in the Crater Commons 17. What do you do when you get injured in a motorcycle accident and you need legal help? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Get ready for winter snowy, icy, slippery roads at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Bedford. We've stocked up on over 100 quality pre-owned trucks and SUVs, and every pre-owned 4x4 and all-wheel drive in stock is sale priced. Many are still under factory warranty or come with our 60-day, 3,000-mile comprehensive used vehicle warranty. And our finance experts are ready to help with a quick, easy, and hassle-free process with great finance options. Be safe, warm, and secure this winter. Get to the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. So what do you do when you get injured on the job and need to know your rights with workers' compensation? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Something different. Welcome back here to Crater High School. Jeff Lang, Damian Idiar on this Friday night. Comets take possession here in second quarter. High scoring affair in the first for high school basketball. Boy, oh boy, 20 to 17. Uh, Different set of affairs from Tuesday night, Damien, where the Comets just scored, what, six points in the first quarter. I would have loved to have seen right there on that play. It was the right pass, but it would have been nice if Rucker had just kind of positioned himself a little bit better. Yeah, I saw it, too, put his hip into him, right? Yeah, just, uh, shield him a little bit, right. or whatever that's called. I don't know what it's called. It's called a sh hip shiver is what I'm calling it. Comets possess. Died to Lynn, hounded by Banner, goes up short. Rebounded by who? Rucker. Rucker out to Duckwitz. Drives in, nice pass, gives it back to Rucker. Goes in, tons of contact, no. Oh, ref. 
call a travel on that. They called a travel on Rucker. I don't think I he even had the ball long enough to really Got to agree travel. with my announcing partner. I didn't see it. But uh, if anything, three seconds in the key. But Well, yeah. Yeah. Turnover, nonetheless, on the Comets. First possession now for Coach Blake Gee and the Highlanders. Stolen away by Dwin. He's all alone. Goes up with the right hand on the left side and two points. Smooth like silk. And that gives Ty nine points here early in the second quarter. Higginson, he's on Banner. Rucker on Kitzhopper. I really like the way Brent Banner handles the ball. He is crafty. Here's Duke. Duke and Duke Duckowitz. <laughs> Kitzhopper has an open look. Off the back iron and up and over the crossbars. Does that end up being a turnover in the books? No. No. That's okay. just a, that's a good question. Just okay. a missed shot, but when it goes off the top of the backboard, yep. I didn't know if that was. Definitely not a, the, the ball is turned over to the other team, but I don't, it's not an official stat. Yeah, okay. Acre bringing up, breaking the press all by himself. And uh, that doesn't work out well for him. Uh, four, well, three Highlanders kind of had him pinned along the left-hand side. He had contact, contact, yeah. but the refs didn't give it to him. He's got to realize maybe to kick that back before the triple. Yeah. Um, he was out of control, so that's why he got the foul. Referees find their whistle here early in the second quarter and make their presence known. I think they had a little talk at uh, the quarter. <laughs> we need to blow the whistle more. First foul on Marcus Idiart. For the Comets, we have Duckowitz, Rucker, Schwenk, DeLynn, and Idiart. For the Highlanders, Kitzhopper, Sims. That's a shot up and in with his second. And that is, uh, gosh, that's McKinnis. So two for two on threes for him. Highlanders are hot from three. Duckowitz, pass out to DeLynn. They haven't had an answer for Ty. Let's see if they're going to ch change things up. Too much body by Duke on DeLynn, and that will be the fifth team foul here. 6-12 left second quarter. Have you played basketball over the years with Ty's dad? I've uh, only played a couple times. A couple times. Yep. John, is that his yep. name? Yeah. Good shooter. Very active, aggressive. He had a good career here in the Rogue Valley back in the day. South Medford grad, yep. Inbound plays for the Comets. Comes to Rucker at the top of the key. Idiot shouts instructions. Man-to-man -man defense for the Highlanders. High screen from Rucker to Delin. He draws much attention. Good defense by the handle. Highlanders here. Duckowitz finds the lane, goes up, ton of contact, still finds a way to get the ball off. Foul on Elias McKinnis. I, you know, I haven't been watching Cody very long, I'll, be, I'll admit it, but he has a lot of confidence in his shot. He's got confidence. What I'm amazed by, too, is his strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a junior, right? And he comes in. He looks a little different from last year. He looks more fit, definitely stronger. And uh, three-point play the old-fashioned way for Cody Duckowitz as he's got uh, five now on the evening. 23-22, we got a good one here. 5.50 left, second quarter. Schwank on the defense. Here's McKinnis. He'll drive in over Rucker, good straight defense. up and down. <laughs> Duckowitz and Kitzhopper go chest to chest. The ball goes off of Duckowitz, so says the OSAA referee. The fan in me always wants to pick on the refs, but the announcer in me can't. I got to be careful. Sorry, crowd. Well, we all do it. It's sitting at home, don't we? <laughs> Bark lounger. McKinnis with a dump off to Bannery, works his way into the lane. Kitzhopper has an open look, set shot. Good. Didn't rotate fast enough on that one. I don't have official stats here, but I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five. That's five three-pointers for the Highlanders here in the first 10 minutes of play. 
Duckowitz says, hey, I'm here too. Right, yeah, right beneath our booth, the junior says, mm -hmm, I can shoot the three as well. He's got an early eight here in the first half. McKinnis with the drive over Biddle. I think he got a piece of that. He did. He didn't give up on it. Here's DeLynn on the move. A lot of contact. That's going to be on Sims. I know they didn't give him the continuation there, but if you're watching that, hopefully the camera caught it. That was really beautiful. <laughs> Good. Kind of split both defenders. Made it look smooth. Yep. Back into the game for the Comets, Kyle Biddle. That is the seventh team foul on the Highlanders. My mistake, so... Delin will have a one and one at the line. It's a good chance to talk to you and say that tonight's game is brought to you in part by Avista Utilities and our friends from Pinnacle 365. Use your peak rewards to save on gas on the way to fresh powder at Mount Ashland. Ty Delin misses that front end. Banry, super quick, guarded by Idiart. Pump. Fake by Gould gets Biddle up in the air with that one foul up and in. The lost art in basketball. That pump fake. It always works. Biddle and Idiart left alone. Picks up a dribble. Asks for help. They do get it across. Duckowitz with eight. Idiart with two off the top of the key to Delin. Ooh, deep. That's a long shot. A 26er at least. Brought down by Schwenk. Schwenk kicks it to Idiart. Extra possession for the Comets. Just under four minutes left here. Yeah, that's, a foul. that's an important foul, Damian. So uh, as Dukowicz was driving baseline, that's a foul on number 10. Is it his third? Or? As Ethan Sims, and he'll have a seat on the bench once they post it. Yep, that's his third foul here early in the fourth, excuse me, second quarter. Never want to lose a start of this early. For the Highlanders, Gould, McKinnis, Banry, Kitzhopper, and Duke. For the Comets, Delin, Akery back into the game, Duckowitz, Schwenk, and Biddle. Duckowitz leading all scorers, or the Comets, that is, at 10 here in the first half. And to Gould, he's guarded by who? Duckowitz. Too much body by Duckowitz. That's sad because he kind of bailed him out there. I don't think he had a good shot. I think we're going to look back at that four-minute mark in the second, and that might be a turning point for the Comets if Sims out. Comets with two three-pointers, and uh, the Highlanders with five tonight. Gold was his first point. North Eugene High School opened up in 1957. Damien. I thought you were going to ask me a trivia question. I was oh, ready. I knew that. That's so. coming. <laughs> 1,100 students for the Highlanders, give or take. Comets, this high school, 1951. Over 1,500 students, so a little bit bigger high school student body-wise at Crater. Both have a commonality. The small school's initiative is Delin hits a beautiful 18-footer on the baseline. He's certainly feeling it tonight. Yeah. That was such a nice decision to shoot that two instead of the three. Talented basketball shot right back. Nolan Duke with five. Back on this side, Delin has 11. Duckowitz with 10. Let's see some defense from these schools, huh, Damian? Schwenk goes up, rebounded with the rafters by Duckowitz. Yeah. Delin with a high screen gets a switch. Delane will dump it down to Biddle. Nice snag with his right hand. Goes up. Gets that to go. Does the young sophomore. Nice pass from Delin. I'm surprised that Kyle could even see that thing. That thing was he Out of control. No look pass. And too Travel. many steps by Biddle. And that beautiful it's no look pass. It's a shame that this ref called that because the other ref was standing right there. I agree with the call. Beautiful no-look pass from Acre. Caught Biddle in a kind of an awkward spot a little bit. Shuffled his feet. 31-31. 2.44 left here, second quarter. All of a sudden, they've turned on the spigot with points here. And Tuesday, we were grinding. What is it, 41-45 was our final score. We may hit that here in the first half. 
Henry up with the left hand, can't get it to go. Good defense to Lynn all alone as he crosses half court. 2.22 on the clock. A lot of contact, can't get it to go. Kitzhopper back. down. Gould, here's Duke to the right. Pump fake, stutter. Over middle and Duckowitz for two. Some nice looking shots from Nolan Duke. He's got seven here in the first half. The Highlanders bench right below us. They're getting our mic. They're imploring defense. I agree. Both teams. Let's play some defense. <laughs> For those of you who like offense, though, no. Let's keep it going. Delin, finger rolls. Oh, too much contact by Duke. He wanted that. He was determined. <laughs> well, he's kind of feeling it, isn't it? They've needed every point. Because without it, Crater would be 12th and 13th point for Ty Delenn as he's going to get a chance for one more at the charity stripe with 140 on the John L. Scott scoreboard. Folks, for almost 50 years, Bill's Glass has been a clear choice in Southern Oregon for your home, your vehicle, any business needs. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass supports our schools and communities. Ty Delenn, a shot hits no rim, all net. 14 points here in the first half for the uh, senior. Excuse me, the junior. 6'3 junior title in. This shot long by Nolan Duke, picked up by Kitzhopper. Extra possession for Coach Blake Gee. So Ben wasn't able to stay in front of Bannery last time. Blake Gee. Ty Delin's going to drive baseline. Finds Biddle on the cut. A pump nice fake. Move. Extra body. And two points. Nice pass. Those two are finding a connection. Biddle now with seven. It's just real savvy play there by Kyle. 36-35. Comets here. Under a minute to go. Danry kicks it over to Gould. Short. Way short, picked up by Duckowitz now. 35 seconds left, first, second quarter, excuse me. Delin's going to slow it down and catch his breath. <laughs> Biddle has it up top over to Hingitson here as we're closing out the first half. That's going to be an illegal screen on Biddle and his second. So uh, that'll be two fouls on Kyle Biddle. So 36-35 here, second quarter. 18 seconds left. McKinnis. No fouls, no fouls. Into Duke. Banry's going to follow Duke over to the Crater student section. Picked up by Idiart. Hedged by Kobe Dukowitz. Now back into the hands of Duke. Duke's going to go up with a floater. Up and in. Great shot as the shot expires. What a half that was. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Hey, stick with us here at halftime. We're going to have a couple of Crater girls from Coach Scott Dipple's uh, team. Ten and five they are uh, here at halftime. So on the score on the John L. Scott scoreboard, Crater Commons 36, North Eugene Highlanders 37. We'll be right back. It's the first of the month, and that means it's time for a new episode of Traffic Safety First. Hey everyone, I'm Officer Ashwell, and today we are going to discuss merging. This one is at the request of a Facebook follower, Michelle. You asked us to cover it, and we're happy to spread the word. This traffic law actually comes from one of the more simply stated Oregon Revised Statutes, ORS 811.285 for failure of merging driver to yield right of way states, a person commits the offense of failure of a merging driver to yield the right of way if the person is operating a vehicle that is entering a freeway or other arterial highway where an acceleration or merging lane is provided for the operator's use and the operator does not look out for and give right of way to vehicles on the freeway or other arterial highway. More simply put, 
This means if you are a driver trying to merge, you must let the drivers go first who are already in the lanes of traffic you are trying to merge into. It is not the job of drivers already on a freeway or highway to yield to mergers. Failure to abide by this traffic law could result in the driver receiving a Class B traffic violation, which carries a minimum fine of $265. And that sums up our episode over merging. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in October for another new episode. It's the first of the month, and that means it's time for a new episode of Traffic Safety First. Hey everyone, I'm Officer Ashwell, and today we are going to discuss merging. This one is at the request of a Facebook follower, Michelle. You asked us to cover it, and we're happy to spread the Hey, welcome back here to Crater High School. We're at halftime of the boys' game. We've got a good one. Uh, it's uh, the John L. Scott scoreboard reads the Comets 37, and uh, excuse me, the Comets 36, and the Highlanders 37. So we got a good one. Speaking of good things, we've got a couple of Coach Scott Dipple's athletes up here. Abigail Winslow, she's a junior, and we're also joined by Izzy McCauley. Did I get that right? Yeah. All right. So we had a good game tonight. You guys won earlier in Midwestern League action. Uh, took your record overall to two and one in the league and 10 and five overall. Um, Abigail, can you just talk a little bit about what Coach Biffle's plan was going into tonight's game? Um, going into tonight's game, it was pretty much all about focus and um, executing early in the game and keeping that uh, momentum and energy throughout the whole on and off the court as a team. Yeah, absolutely, that's super important. Uh, Izzy, can you kind of talk about your sophomore? Um, what's your role on this team? Uh, I would say a big part a shooter. Yeah? Yeah. It, was it going tonight? I heard that you had a good first half. Is that true? Yeah. First yes. quarter, yeah. Oh, first quarter. I, uh, 13 points first half is what I heard. Yes. Maybe they were all in the first quarter. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Abigail, you played last year as well, right? Yes. You have a younger sister on the team. Yeah. What's that like? Oh, it's super fun. Uh, definitely, like... A once in a lifetime experience to be able to play on varsity with my sister. And I'm trying to uh, enjoy every moment because, you know, last year will be our last year playing together. Yeah. Obviously, playing college together. So. That's cool. You yeah. got this year and you got next year as well, right? Yeah. So, and maybe yeah. more. So, yeah. that's awesome. Um, Isabel, some favorite memories so far this year for you? Oh, probably winning the Corvallis tournament. Winning the Corvallis? The locker room afterwards. All right. Oh, yeah. So, you guys were having some fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I didn't know that. So, that's outstanding. So, you went north. Was that before or after, well, after Thanksgiving? After Christmas. After yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, outstanding. You guys have played some tough teams. I was able to call the Springfield Millers game last week up there. What a game that was, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys battled them. You really won for three of the four quarters, but they had that 19-0 run in quarter number three. But you'll get them here when they come home, right? Yes. Abigail, uh, which high school do you go to here at Craven? I'm a uh, CAP student. You're a CAP student. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got to ask, uh, favorite teacher out there? I know they're all favorites, but anybody you want to give a shout out to? Um, I have to say Miss Merritt. Miss Merritt. Or math teacher, yeah. Awesome. So you're interested in math. Definitely. All right. Very good. Um, and Izzy, where, what school do you go to? Caps as well. Caps as well. Yep. And hit me with a teacher. Uh, probably also Miss Merritt. All right. If yeah. you're out there listening, Miss Merritt, <laughs> got a couple of students here that love you. Uh, any other sports for you, Abigail, here at Crater High? Um, not this year, no. Uh, you you yeah. kind of said that like maybe there was something in the past or something in the future. Yeah, I had to stop playing volleyball because of an ankle injury, but okay. I was able to get recovered for basketball All and, right. you know. Well, good. Well, maybe Sorry. next year. Never know, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how about you, Izzy? Volleyball. Volleyball. Yes. So that would be Coach Leaf Jensen. Yes. Yes. Do you know uh, You know what Coach Leaf Jensen's favorite sport is? Soccer. So, yeah, that's a really good I, guess. I, yes. I, it would be soccer or volleyball. I know Soccer that. volleyball. He's taken up this other thing called pickleball. Oh, oh yes. yes. Uh -huh. I heard all about that. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I know about Coach Jensen as well. Yeah. So. Um, well, um, you guys got a long row ahead. You're 15 games in, uh, 10 and 5, and off to a great start, 2 and 1 in Midwestern. We play, head up to Churchill High in a week, 
And uh, then you come back to the Rogue Valley, I believe, for Eagle Point. But a couple crater stars here, current and in the future, Abigail Winslow and Izzy McCauley. We'll be right back here on CraterRockSports.net. Hey everyone, I'm Officer Ashwell and this is Traffic Safety First. Today we're going to cover a traffic issue that is a common cause of motor vehicle crashes, following too closely. Let's go! Following too closely is covered in ORS 811.485, and violation of this statute constitutes a Class B traffic violation, which carries a fine of $265. But what does following too closely mean? Although the statute itself is pretty self-explanatory, it specifically means driving a motor vehicle so as to follow another vehicle more closely than is reasonable and prudent, while taking into account the speed of other traffic and conditions of the road. It also specifies that trucks, commercial buses, or other motor vehicles towing another vehicle must specifically provide enough space between themselves and another such vehicle so an overtaking vehicle may enter and occupy the space without danger. The same condition applies when vehicles are driving in a motorcade or a caravan. Now that we know what the law states, what's a good rule of thumb to go by to ensure you're driving far enough behind the person in front of you? It's a little difficult to have something that applies to everyone since all cars and drivers are different. However, you should ensure you have enough time to react and get your vehicle to stop without hitting the vehicle in front of you, should that driver have to stop suddenly for any reason. Something to keep in mind is if you're going about 25 miles an hour, you'll want to keep at least one and a half car lengths between you and the vehicle in front of you. Driving closer than that will likely not give you enough reaction time to prevent a collision. Thanks for watching this episode on Following Too Closely. We'll be back next month with another new episode. Any phone you want. Anyone I want? Any phone you want. Say cheese. Connection is the greatest gift of all. Mama. At US Cellular, we're offering any phone free for new and current customers. New and current customers get any phone free at Siskiyou Cellular, the Rogue Valley's exclusive authorized agent for US Cellular. Visit SOUSCellular.com for details. Bill's Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home and helps reduce energy bills year-round. Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. here to Crater High School. Nice to have a couple comic girls up here at halftime visiting Abigail Winslow and Izzy McCauley. Leading scorers for the Comets, Cody Duckowitz had 10, Ty Lynn with 14, Hunter Schwenk with one, Kyle Biddle with seven, Acre with two, Marcus Idiart with two, four, the Highlanders, Bandreath led, or excuse me, had eight, Duke seven, Kitzhopper five, Sims two, Gould one, and then six points for McKinnis. Very balanced scoring for the Highlanders. 
Highlander ball here to start the third quarter. Banry, lots of dribbling. Kitzhopper. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Strong move by Kitzhopper. Rebounded by Biddle. Tapped away by Kitzhopper. And stay Comet ball. So Kyle got lucky there. He didn't see him behind him. Almost lost it. Highlander stay with the full court press. Kind of a 1-2-1-1. A one, one, one. DeLynn trapped to the middle. Now Higginson picks up his dribble after just one. Biddle now into the corner to Duckowitz. Up to Higginson, the starting quarterback of Crater High, Ben Higginson, two points. Nice pass. Yeah. Way to break it. Answered. Teardrop. Duke really starts where he left off. Two points brings him to nine for the evening. Forced it. Here comes the Highlanders, five on four. Bandry gets Biddle up in the air. He has two. Sims working on DeLynn. I'll be surprised if Biddle can stay in front of Bandry this quarter. <laughs> That's an interesting up. matchup. You're going speed versus length, so we'll see what wins. Duke feeling it. He up and in for three. Good looking ball player here. Yeah, didn't have an answer for him yet. 12 now for Duke, 42-38. Risky pass by Acre puts Higginson in a tough spot. Yeah. And that's going to be a turnover on the Comets or a foul. Yeah, the only thing Ben could have done there was just grab it and hold it strong. But he tried to go with the ball. I'd like to see Ashton, you know, maybe take a few dribbles and look to something maybe in the center of the court. True. Easier said than done. Turnover, Comets. Ball into Kitzhopper at the elbow. Tapped away into the hands of Banry now. Two minutes gone, third quarter. Another strange matchup, Marcus on Sims. Shot taken by Sims, comes off. Highlanders get another chance. Here's Banry, a lot of dribbling. Works his way into the lane. Stops and pops too much by Acre. He's going to go chat with the referee. The wrong one. You want to <laughs> chat with the referee who called the foul on you. Well, maybe not. No, he would have got shut out by that ref. That's true. Two fouls on the Comets this half. First on the night for Acre. Banry, a shooter of sorts, you can tell, up and in. What year in school is he? 32nd timeout. He's a junior. 32nd timeout by Coach Brian Scott. We'll do the same. John L. Scott scoreboard reads Highlanders 43, Comets 38. What do you do when you get injured in a motorcycle accident and you need legal help? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com. Helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Get ready for winter snowy, icy, slippery roads at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford. We've stocked up on over 100 quality pre-owned trucks and SUVs, and every pre-owned 4x4 and all-wheel drive in stock is sale priced. Many are still under factory warranty or come with our 60-day, 3,000-mile comprehensive used vehicle warranty. And our finance experts are ready to help with a quick, easy, and hassle-free... Back again, uh, one more free throw for Banry. He currently has nine on the night. We'll keep it there. Poor rebounding by the there? Comets there. Duke with an easy board. Banry up, Biddle battles. Spencer kicks it out to Duke. Duke misses this time. Biddle cleans up the rebound. Here's Acre on the left hand side. He's going to fumble that right out of bounds. Just not, uh, just not feeling it or not in no, sync. Bad Easy. start to the quarter for sure. You kind of, I don't know, you could sense that when you were watching Ashton. He just almost went so full speed that. Ashton frustrated with himself. Second foul here. In just a couple minutes, five and a half left, third quarter. Comets have yet 
Well, they have scored that field goal, excuse me, or a point. Too much body by DeLynn, but no foul call. Nope, the far ref's going to say that is a foul. Yeah, it did look like he got turned around. Second foul by DeLynn. Inbounds play for the Highlanders. Comes to Kitzhopper. He's doubled, triple team, kicked out. Sims. Shot, nice That's dump pass. off to Spencer for two points. Good ball movement for the Highlanders. Spencer's with his first bucket of the night. 45-38. It's been all Highlanders here. Collins got to be careful not to let this one get away from him. I don't know how he got that one to fall. Couldn't ask for a, a more important bucket there. Tied to Lynn. Really kind of forced the issue on the left-hand side. Went in. A lot of contact. Hard shot off the glass. Went in. Gives uh, Ty unofficially 16 points here tonight. Leading both teams. Duke up quickly, the left-hand side bobbles it into the hands of Sims right in front of our booth. Coach Blake Gee wants a 30-second timeout. We'll do the same. John L. Scott scoreboard, 45-40, favor of the Highlander. What do you do when you get injured in a motorcycle accident and you need legal help? Easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com, helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Get ready for winter snowy, icy, slippery roads at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Bedford. We've stocked up on over 100 quality pre-owned trucks and SUVs, and every pre-owned 4x4 and all-wheel drive in stock is sale price. Many are still under factory warranty or come with our 60-day, 3,000-mile comprehensive used vehicle warranty. And our finance experts are ready to help with a quick, easy, and hassle-free process with great finance options. Be safe, warm, and secure this winter. Get to the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. So what do you do when you get injured on the job and need to know your rights with workers' compensation? Highlanders with possession after that quick timeout. Here's Bannery doing his thing. Lots of dribbles. Goes up, puts it on the rim. Cleaned up by Kitzhopper, but touches nobody. Referees point south, and they see Comet Ball. On the court for the Comets, Delin. Acre, Idiart, Biddle, and Duckowitz for the Highlanders. Duke, Gold, Kitzhopper, Banry, and Spencer. No movement for the Comets. Let's go. We have foul on the floor. Number 12. That's Caden Gould. Just a second team foul. First personal for Gould. Acre looking for help. There's DeLynn. He's had the hot hand. He's got 16. Finds his way to the free throw line. Nice pass. Pass stolen away by Spencer. Good defense. Thought it was going to open up, but recovered at the last second. Spencer now, 6 4 breakdown of Acre. Finds Gould in the corner. Biddle chasing him on the curl. Too many hands by the sophomore. He's going to learn. Yep. That'll be the number three foul on Biddle. 4.01 left here, third quarter. Duke gets a break. Into the game is McKinnis now. McKinnis, a set play, three point shot. He hit a couple in the first half. A lot of contact from Gould on Idiart. It's nice to see a guard go get a rebound, huh? Mm -hmm. Made a difference there. Should be a lot of those if there's proper box out. Biddle does have a rest on the bench. Senior 6'5", Hunter Schwenk now in. 45-40. Third Midwestern League game for both these teams. They're both 2-0. Acre from the elbow. Off far to the left. One more dribble there would have been nice. That's a shot by Jonas Spencer. I assume he's not left-handed, right? I that was he's not left-handed, but a beautiful shot. <laughs> Fourth point. Nice. For Spencer, 47-40. Cross-court pass, a long shot by Marcus Idiart. He, again, 
Butler is on the left-hand side. Down on the floor is Schwenk. He saves it. Duckowitz kicks it to Idiart, and Scott <laughs> saves a possession and calls a full timeout. He's going to reset things here. So are we. 3.13 left, third quarter. Highlander's up 47-40. We'll be right back on Table Rock Sports. Any phone you want. Anyone I want? Any phone you want. Connection is the greatest gift of all. Mama. At U.S. Cellular, we're offering any phone free for new and current customers. New and current customers get any phone free at Siskiyou Cellular, the Rogue Valley's exclusive authorized agent for U.S. Cellular. Visit SOUSCellular.com for details. Bill's Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home and helps reduce energy bills year-round. Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. Great ad by Bill's Glass, one of our loyal sponsors here on Table Rock Sports. Comets will take it in under their own hoop after that full timeout from Brian Scott. Idiot finds Schwenk, no hesitation whatsoever. Gets every bit of the rim. And gets that to go. Boy, did the Comets need that field goal <laughs> after that long timeout. Schwenk on the three. He really, he has no shame as a big man to shoot that big three. I think he's got a nice rotation. It I know that he good. took two or three last uh, this past Tuesday. Bannery up with tons of confidence so much contact underneath checked in now number five for north eugene that's well that's back excuse me ben kitzhopper cody duckwitz thought he was going to get the charge there but he went right around them tied to lynn idiot with an open look from three off the back iron into the hands of gold to fall. stolen away by idiot in the corner nope that's going to be called a jump ball Possession is going to stay with the Comets, though. All right, Crater. We were talking at the break that we need defense here. Let's see what happens. Highlander scoring at will here in the third quarter. Some defensive pressure has to step up. Delin left all alone. Can't do that, but, boy, that all the way down, all the way back out. 49-43 still. Bannery with Idiard on his hip. Too much body. Yeah. Having a tough time staying in front of Banner. He is a quick one. Sixteen fouls on the Comets. Three on the Highlanders. 49, 43, 211 left third quarter. Here's McKinnis way out front, guarded by Acre. Duckowitz here on Spencer. He's had a nice third quarter. Open look. He's going to drive, spin, feeling it. Too much contact. We're going to see a lot of free throws in the fourth quarter, Jeff. Seventh team foul. This is a shooting foul for Jonas Spencer, 6'4", junior. Gives us a chance to say uh, that we thank our great sponsors, including Sherm's Thunderbird, Food for Less, John L. Scott Real Estate, your partners in keeping high school athletics streaming alive. You know, one thing I've noticed about the Highlanders is almost every single one of them has the green light, it seems like, to shoot yeah, from all, anywhere at any time. They're all extremely talented. Spencer up and in with two. Don't give up Six. your dribble. There you go. Schwenk in that spot. Hard pass to Idiart. Ty Delin drives. Double team. Up. Oh, nothing. Oh. Rutgers checked in. He'll kiss it off of Banry, but no, the referee says you stepped before you threw it off of Banry's chest. Dangerous uh, situation here for the Comets, an eight-point spread, 51-43, a minute 40 left here in the third quarter. Duke in for Gould for the Highlanders. Crater just hasn't had an answer for everything that the Highlanders have been thrown at him. They're getting a good combination of players on the court, and really a successful team, fun to watch. Schwank, body and Banry, Banry all the way. Challenge is blocked that. by 
Up the path, nice pass by Schwenk. Idiard has it under the hoop, he's going to back it out. Didn't feel he had an advantage. Let's see what happens. Dido he in. He'll That's have good. the advantage from 24. Ooh. Nothing. Doesn't go. Got an open look. A little far, I guess. NBA 3. Henry. Here's Duke. He Ooh. got the green light right in front of the bench. Nolan Duke. With 15 on the night. I like Duke's game. Schwenk with a lot of body mm -hmm. by Kitzhopper. Highlander bench didn't like that. Two big fellas going at it. They liked Kitzhopper's positioning and they thought that he had a clean block. 54 43, under a minute left here, third quarter. Hunter Schwenk with two free throws. Again, that's a good rotation, Damian. Yeah, looks really nice. Uh, he can stroke it, feeling confident. Crater crowd's going to need to be the sixth man tonight. Let's go, Crater. Schwenk, two for two on this trip. He's got three on the night. Here's Jonas Spencer. He runs into Schwenk. Just keeping that separation. 50 seconds now. Blake Gee wants to burn about a minute of this time. Duckowitz on McKinnis. A lot of ball pressure. He lifts his feet. Got caught in the air. Got caught in the air like you said. Ty Delin steals it away. 31 seconds left. McKinnis fouls him and Coach Blake Gee says, why did you do that, son? <laughs> It's all about instruction at this age. I McKinnis, know. the young man, goes over to coach, gets some instruction, says, get back at it. Yeah, it just had, he was still frustrated from the turnover before, so I knew exactly where his head was. Poor kid. 30 seconds left here, third quarter, 54-45. Idiart up the right-hand side over to Delin. Comets looking for the last shot here, even though they're behind, but Hunter Schwenk drives Ooh. body, and he'll throw it into the hands of Coach Brian Scott, who points easily at the score clock and says, 17 seconds, yeah. son. Let's hold the ball. He missed the memo to hold the ball. <laughs> so both McKinnis and Schwenk with some mistakes here. It's no fouls. Come on. Straight up defense. Weave by the Highlanders now. Eight seconds. Banry in. Off balance. Oh. Two-point shot for Banry. Going to get a free throw with it. Yeah, that was I'm very unfortunate for the Comets. Tenth and eleventh point for Banry, the third of the half. 4.9 time left. Cope Blake Gee working the sidelines here back and forth. Kind of like a Idol in, crosses half court with three seconds. Some contact, gets a shot up off the side rim. Great quarter for the North Eugene Highlanders. John L. Scott scoreboard reads 57, Comets 45. It takes meticulous planning. Continuous monitoring and forward thinking to deliver the perfect three egg omelet. Enjoy the patio weather and a brand new menu at Tap Rock Northwest Grill, where friends and family gather and memories are made. Come visit us today or visit our website. And we're back here at Crater High School on this Friday night. Three-day weekend, we got a uh, holiday in front of us. Martin Luther King, as Rucker stole it away, did a 360 spin right into the hands of Banry, and that's kind of been what it's like tonight for the Comets. Can't get a break. Rucker hedges 
the screen big time. Bandry into the lane. Here's Spencer. Nice third quarter. Oh, Just a dump off. What a dump off, huh? That oh, was that. beautiful. Again, full court pressure by the Highlanders just to get the Comets off pace. 14 point lead for North Eugene. Comets need a run. Duckowitz blocked from behind by Spencer who's really had a really nice second half. Quiet first half. Right. Duckowitz, I don't know if you saw that, but Duckowitz, his frustration came out there and he kind of gave a shove to number eight, or number zero, sorry. Well, that's going to be a couple, well, one and one. Spencer's going to get a one and one opportunity here. If the Highlanders are hitting their free throws, I'm not saying it's game over, but... Crater is going to have to really perform at a high level here. Light of pedigree here at North Eugene. State championships in 1963, 66, 76, 77, and 2007. So they've won five boys state basketball titles in North Eugene. Spencer hits one of two. Rebound brought down by Rucker. Delin quickly over half court. 15 point lead by the Highlanders here. Ty Delin puts it off the backboard. Swatted by Rucker into the hands of Gould. I know Ty probably feels like he's got to do all the scoring, but they're going to have to move the ball around. They can't win this one on one. These Highlanders are too disciplined on staying down on defense. And Great rebounders. Schwenk with a rebound on the defense from Rucker. Idiart now. Biddle on the baseline. A lot of body. That's a block. It'll be just the sixth team foul on the Highlanders. Damien, as you know, 1977 grad of North Eugene is one of the best. His name is Danny Ainge. Uh, those of you that know Danny, he's the only person ever to be a high school All-American first team in football, basketball, and baseball. Three sport, all American first team from North Eugene High School. Amazing. Those of you that followed Danny Ainge, you know, he went on to BYU as a nice dump off from Dick nice. Berlin to Rucker. They needed that after a drought. Again, Danny Ainge uh, went to BYU where he's a John Wooden Award winner. He's also an, uh, you know, an all American there at BYU. He was drafted in high school from the Toronto Blue Jays in 1977. Of course, he was also drafted at BYU by the Boston Celtics. That was in 1981. Played for the Celtics, the Suns, the Blazers, and the Kings. Must have been pretty thrilling for him to play alongside the legend. Yes. Ooh. That's Nolan Duke. He's in the corner. He's hit three threes here in the second half. He's now the leading scorer for the Highlanders as he grabs that rebound. 18 points for Duke, unselfishly passes it. Gould, now Bannery. Well, the Comets are gonna learn from this. They're gonna have to uh, make some adjustments when they play this team again. Rucker on the ground, giving it all he's got. Bannery, dribbling, hounded by Higginson. He's gonna get that <laughs> up and in. <laughs> He had so much English on that thing, it just stuck up on the rim. Andrea Jr. at 5'9", putting on a dribbling show and a finishing show. Five and a half for him, 13. And one. Oh. Four fifty-six here left, fourth quarter. Highlanders up big, 65-47. Also, Midwestern League action happening tonight. Churchill is in the Rogue Valley playing Eagle Point. Ashland travels up I-5 and is taking on the Millers of Springfield. In the Midwestern League, Churchill is the number three ranked team in the state at 12 and one, followed by Crater, the number eight team in the state at 11 and three. Thurston, seven and seven as Rucker hits one of two. They're ranked number 10, Ashland. 
number 15 in the state, and then North Eugene, number 16, looking to climb the ladder big time. John, John L. Scott scoreboard reads 65-48 in favor of the Highlanders. What do you do when you don't know the first step in applying for Social Security disability? It's easy. Just go to LetUsFightForYou.com. That's it. LetUsFightForYou.com, helping Oregonians get justice for over 40 years. Daily adventures start right here at Pinnacle 365. You'll find exactly what you need for your morning motivation. Later in the day, add some crunch to your lunch with crispy, crunchy chickens, mouth-watering chicken, and chicken tenders. Wherever your next adventure takes you, we're here to keep you energized throughout the day. And our New Peak Rewards program helps you save money on fuel so you can travel further for less. Daily adventures are better with Pinnacle 365. There's a time machine that takes you back to a world just a few streets wide. So dive into the past and let them see the world through a simpler lens called Southern Oregon. Their adventure begins when you travel Medford. Crater High Band just pounding it out tonight. They're certainly feeling it. Love having the band here. Great student section. North Eugene Highlanders just brought their game tonight. A game, a game for sure. It's fun to watch actually. Foul underneath it looks like on Kitzhopper on a push against a win. Kitzhopper looks incredulous and says, mm, I don't know what you're talking about. Nonetheless, we're gonna go the other way. They haven't been very physical down low. No one's really done much down low. It's all been the outside game, it seems like. That was a nice pass, give and go. Very nice pass from Acre to Rucker who finishes off the glass. Josh Rucker, one of the better screen and roll high school basketball players that you'll see. Mm -hmm. Bannery to Gold, tipped away by Delin, and right into the hands of oh. Kitzhopper. That's the night it's been. Really bad luck there because it was just an inches from going to a crater player. Kitzhopper up in two. Rucker back out to Delin. Delin oh, open lane, blocked by Duke. Blocked. Here's Biddle on the ground. Rucker on the ground. Now Biddle, blocked. Up and down, that's a jump ball. Good defense from the Highlanders. And Kyle didn't sense anybody was behind him, but he needed to jump like a foot higher on that thing. Next game for the Comets. They'll go up to Churchill next Friday night. And then they're back home against Eagle Point. Next in line is Delin. Fires up a shot from too far, let's just say. Highlanders travel to Thurston next week as well as Ashland, so a couple tough games for them next week. Things heating up in here in the Midwestern League. One thing I've noticed in this game, <laughs> I like our position up here in, this, in the booth, but we're too close to the other bench because we're here and there. they're cheering for their team. I don't like that. No. Five seconds. Oh, I got the timeout called. Coach Blake Gee realized that too much dribbling happened on the other side, and 30-second timeout is called. We'll do the same here on Table Rock. We'll be right back. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to plan your funeral, except at the time of the funeral. At Conger Morris, we know that there are so many advantages to planning ahead. It eases the burden on our families at their worst time. Good time out from Coach Blake Gee. Nearly stolen away by Duckowitz. Here's Kitzhopper into the corner to who? Duke. That one's off the right. Brought down by Biddle quickly up to Higginson. Chow. Higginson finds Biddle for the long three in the corner. Comes up a short off the front iron. Gold 
All the way over to Spencer. Into the middle of the Duke. Nice finish, nice ball. That's Passing. where the ball needed to go, right? For the trailing center. <laughs> Kitzhopper picks up his fourth. Akery will have a couple free throws here. Well, the Comets have to be a little disappointed. I think they were hoping to protect their home court. But what can you do? Sometimes you don't have everything you need. Live and learn. Last yeah. year, the Comets finished 23-6, and six, a 12-4 and four overall record in league. They brought home a fourth-place trophy at the 5A level. This is a young, young Comet team. Yeah, two seniors only, right? Yes. Spencer is going to turn that over. Taylor Zidiart thinks about the three to Duckowitz. He's got one thing in mind, oh, and that's wow. to score, but he can't. Kitzhopper brings it down. Stolen away by Acre. Acre drives baseline, goes up with his right hand for two. Pretty nifty shot there. Sims back in. Hounded by Duckeritz. Biddle on Duke. Highlanders looking to run some time off. Comets with nine personal fouls. Back door off the foot of Duckeritz. Kicking. Got any weekend plans, Damian? Tomorrow, 49ers, baby. Oh, that's right. Let's talk about that after we come back. 2.05 left, fourth quarter, 69-54 Highlanders. Dear Dad, today was hard. You know how much I love you, and you know how much I love sports. I was afraid to say this to your face, but I heard you yelling again from the stands during my game. You were shouting at the coach, the refs, even the other parents. It embarrasses me when you yell at everyone. It really stresses me out. I love sports. I love to play, and I love my team. I want us both to enjoy the game, win or lose. But we can't if you always lose your temper. I hope you can cheer for me and the other players. It's about more than just the score. It's about us all enjoying the experience. I hope you can join me for my next game. I really want you to be there. Love, Katie. Highlanders taking it out under their hoop here. Two minutes left. Bandry's going to be fouled. It's going to be two shots as it's the tenth foul on Idiart. So, 49ers and who are they playing tomorrow? They're playing the Seahawks. That's right. One thirty. A lot of people uh, in this part of the country like the Seahawks. But yeah. Let me ask you that. So, do you consider yourself a Northwest person? No, oh, never okay. have. So never you're will. a Bay Area person that yep. lives in the Rogue Valley. Yep. So that's why you don't. Northwest root for the starts in Portland. <laughs> My opinion. <laughs> so that's why you don't root for the Seahawks. Okay. No, yeah. All right. Well, I'm a Seahawk fan. I always have been since Jim Zorn, Sherman Smith, Steve Largent, name a few. I did like Steve Largent. Love their coach, <laughs> oldest coach in the NFL, out there still doing it. I love watching him on the sideline. He kind of prowls. I don't he know does. if you watched him, but he's like, yeah. it's a swagger. Pretty cool coach, actually. I do like him. Kyle Biddle in for the floater, shows off some of his skills, a sophomore for two. High scoring affair tonight. Highlanders already with 70 points tonight. Pass into Spencer, bounce pass to Nolan Duke, up and in for two. I like the increase in intensity, listening to Coach Scott, but this team, this Highlander team can handle that. Acre gets himself in trouble. Double team takes a huge step to get out of it. Up and in for two. 
Yeah, I think your Niners are due, Damian. They've uh, oh, have no. won 10 in a row. And uh, I'm just like, how long can you go with a rookie quarterback and keep winning? So I do wish you the best of luck tomorrow. <laughs> I have no money on the game, but my you know, lifelong fan, so I'm hoping. All right. Okay, I might I might join in and watch that. 130. Sounds good. Did uh, Marcus foul out? He did. Marcus Idiart with five fouls. Bannery going to have a couple shots here. I expected that. Bannery is a tough cover. Mm -hmm. and he gets the ball a lot, and he's got permission to dribble. Joey Bannery up and in for two more free throws. I want to thank those listeners up in Eugene that have watched tonight's game. Keep an eye on us. We've got plenty more action coming your way. We're on the airwaves. Duckowitz, the junior, drives baseline. Double team is Sims. He'll dump it to Spencer. Spencer to Duke. Duke, too much contact from Higginson. Really had no choice protect yeah. the rim you can't let you can't let that happen in your home you got to protect the rim not hurt them but you know you can't let them get an easy bucket even at the end of the game and under a minute here to go and we'll put this one to bed as will coach Brian Scott and <laughs> the rest of the Comet Clown stick around for the Conger Morris postgame show to come your way next. Time out here. We'll be right back. Take Rock's fault. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Any time is a good time to plan your funeral, except at the time of the funeral. At Conger Morris, we know that there are so many advantages to planning ahead. It eases the burden on our families at their worst time. Pre-planning also alleviates their stress, knowing the funeral costs are already taken care of and it allows your service to be more meaningful with all of your wishes being taken care of. Call us today for personalized assistance in creating your own plan. Conger Morris, we'll always be there. What a, goal, what a ball game by the Highlanders and Coach Blake Gee. They're gonna push their record to seven and seven. They're gonna be three and oh in the Midwestern League. And they're going to have road games next week against the Thurston Colts and the Ashland Grizzlies. A, a tough test. But boy, from just from my naked eye, they're good. Ty Delenn hits a late three-pointer in front of the Comet bench. Still full court pressure. Four Comets in the backcourt bothering Bannery. Pass to Spencer. Sims now. Instructions are stay calm, stay calm. 30 seconds left. Too much contact from Delin. Well coached team. It was a real pleasure to watch them. Mm -hmm. Of course, I would have liked to have seen the results different, but it's early in the season. We'll play them again. Bannery takes this one off the back iron. There's a lot of banneries in the Rogue Valley. I wonder if there any relation, huh? Relation. I'll have to check that out for next time. Duckowitz with the rebound. Ty Delin on the three. Time out before the shot. We'll be right back. Table Rock Sports. I'm Pat Cox with Sherm's Food Stores. The employees of Sherm's are proud to be part of your community. 
We have thousands of customers in our stores every day, and our checkers know a lot of them on a first name basis. They tend to enjoy what they do, and they love it, so it reflects in how they treat the customer. If you live anywhere in Southern Oregon, there's a Sherm store near you. We hope to see you soon. If you shop with us, you will save money. Fuel up for your race day adventures at Pinnacle 365. Pit for your early morning caffeine fix to help you get off to a good start and be rewarded with free motivation. Stay hydrated as you ride into turn two. And if fountain drinks are your thing, get your sixth free. Add crunch to your lunch as you head into turn three. Fuel up for the remainder of the race with your Peak Rewards app and save at least 16 cents a gallon. Your daily journey to the winner's circle starts at Pinnacle 365. Well, the Crater students have stuck it out the whole game. Nobody's going home early over there, Damien. Maybe there's some kind of a party after that we don't know about, Jeff. I don't think we're invited. Yeah, what else are you going to do? Where are you going to go? <laughs> In and out? In and out, DQ. I don't know. Ray's, is Ray's still open? Probably. No, no, no. <laughs> Die to Lynn. Race down by Higginson. Here's Acre. He'll cast it up with left. <laughs> Leak out the band. Higginson bothers him. Here's the win. Up the middle. See if they get one more shot off. They do. Comes up short. Three seconds left. Big win for North Eugene Highlanders here at Crater High School. They move to 7-7, seven and 3-0, seven, and, oh, and they are excited. They are. Right well, they deserve the it. They it's going to be a great do. bus ride home for them. 12-point win for the Highlanders over the Comets. Comets next play up in Eugene at Churchill. The girls and boys action. And then uh, the following week on the 24th, they'll come back to host Eagle Point. Girls and boys will have that here on Table Rock Sports for you. Jason Brewster, if you're out there, we missed you tonight. We'll look forward to the next time. Everybody, we'd like to thank you for watching tonight's live streaming action. I'd like to thank Dave Hurd, Crater High Athletic Director, for hosting the Lithia Superstore Game of the Night on Table Rock Sports. Special thanks, of course, to the head coaches, Blake Gee and Brian Scott. Again, the final score on the John L. Scott scoreboard. Comets 63, Highlanders 75. It's been a special presentation of Table Rock Sports. Executive producer is Joe Bray. With Damien Idiard, I'm Jeff Lang saying thanks for watching and good night from Crater High School.